A class definition has two main components. The first component is the fields or properties. We have seen how to create objects with certain fields. The second component is methods, which represent the functions or actions that can act on the object. For instance, there's a built-in set class. We can create a set object like this, s equals set. And then there are methods we can call on the set object. We can do s.add5, and here add is actually a method of the set class. Recall that this is kind of like having a function named add which acts on the set s. So if add was a function, the syntax would be add s comma 5. But it's a method, so the syntax is s dot add 5. We have been using methods a lot. We used string methods, list methods, set methods, and so on. But how do we define our own methods for the classes we define? Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a rectangle class. To keep things simple, I'll just keep track of two properties, the width and the height. And now that I have this class definition, I can create different rectangle objects or instances. Typically, just specifying the fields of an object is not enough for your program. You'll want to do certain things with those objects. So you'll define functions that act on the object. One very simple function might be getArea. It takes a rectangle object as input and returns the area of that rectangle. So returns rectangle.width times rectangle.height. Note that this function is not part of the class. It's outside the class definition. To use this function, we can create a rectangle object, r equals rectangle 3 comma 5, which creates a rectangle of width 3 and height 5. And then we can do something like print, the area is get area r. This is the function way of doing things. If get area was a method, we would call it as r.getArea. That would be the syntax. Now, in order to turn this function into a method, I need to put it inside the class. So let's indent the code and put the function inside the class. And that's really it. GetArea is now a method instead of a function. But I'll make a small change. This parameter, rectangle, is really a reference to self. It is basically the same self parameter as the one you see in the constructor in it. And even though you can call the parameter whatever you want, the convention is to always call it self. Now, when we call this method by doing r.getArea, this r is passed as the argument. So this r is assigned to self, which means in the method, we end up returning r.width times r.height. And that is exactly what we want. We can create another rectangle r2, the width is 2 and the height is 10, and we can print the area by calling r2.getArea. In this case, r2 is passed as an argument to the method, so self becomes r2, and we return r2.width times r2.height. If this seems a bit confusing right now, that's completely fine, but I do want to say that conceptually or operationally, there isn't anything too complicated going on here. It's just a matter of getting used to this new syntax and getting used to having this parameter called self. Okay, let me show you the definitions of some other methods. We have getParameter, which returns two times self.width plus self.height. We have double dimensions, which modifies the object by doubling the width and the height. And we have rotate, which rotates the rectangle by swapping the width and the height. There are typically two categories of methods. One category reads and returns information about the object. So the first two methods here are in this category. The second category modifies the object. The last two methods are in this category. Note that the last two methods don't return anything. This is because classes we create are, by default, mutable. And so our methods here are destructive.